So, I spent nearly 100 hours playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I am thoroughly convinced that it is peak modern Final Fantasy that greatly expands from the first remake game while honoring the original game's roots. Now today I'm going to dive into what makes Final Fantasy VII Rebirth such a great, amazing game, and some of the things that it can improve. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the gargantuan, gargantuan, gargantuan sequel to Final Fantasy VII Remake, and is the second entry in the trilogy of games remaking the original 1997 Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth continues the story from Remake as Cloud, Strife, and his Avalanche crew strive to prevent Shinra and Sephiroth from destroying the world. The game actually introduces new characters like Yuffie and Kate Sith, while deepening the stories of returning characters such as your lovely old Baron, T -t 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 Tifa, and Red XIII. And also Aerith. With the end of Remake, Rebirth actually expands on the themes of rewriting Destiny, exploring uncharted territory. Unexpected changes hence happen to the narrative. Zack Fair is involved in this game, something that the original Final Fantasy VII didn't have. Now a little bit of backstory. My first foray into Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy X. You know, you got awesome Tinus who I really relate with. You got Yuna who's super awesome and Tinus and Yuna love one another and it's so beautiful and now I'm an emotional wreck! Anyways, my second game was Final Fantasy XII. It was a little bit more open world, there were a bit more things to do. However, it's the dungeons that gave me an emotional wreck and I didn't really finish it. Anyways, those Final Fantasy games left an impact in my heart and I always really liked the gameplay loop that it provided. Now when I played Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it immediately gave me that same old feeling that I had when I played those games for the first time on the PlayStation 2. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is an ambitious and epic undertaking, and perhaps it's one of the greatest Final Fantasy games since I first played Final Fantasy with X. This is definitely Final Fantasy VII at its most open world and expansive. It has like a wide variety of content and an array of character arcs. Now before we get into that, I just want to introduce you to my friend named the subscribe button. He's a very lonely button that needs some clicking. So can you please destroy that thing and give it a little bit of your support? A uh, thank you. Okay, Rebirth is essentially remake on steroids. Whatever remake had Rebirth perfected and expanded. Rebirth, unlike the first game, is a fully open world game. It's not semi-open world. Midgar from the first game was okay, but when you step outside Midgar and you take a look at the bright blue sky, I couldn't help but be fascinated by the beautiful world I was seeing. Now I'm hearing that this is like one of those games where you have to be in graphics mode to enjoy because the performance mode kinda sucks. But my eyes must be blind because I'm a console peasant maybe. But being outside Midgar still felt really good. You really feel like you're in this world and you enjoy exploring this world. There are so many activities that you can do in FF7 Rebirth, it is crazy. And I really enjoy it too. I've been exposed to other open world games like Horizon Forbidden West, and ones even bigger like Red Dead Redemption, but somehow I've never felt this great an urge to complete side quests like I did in FF7 Rebirth. Sure, Horizon's world is beautiful and awesome, but the story never really carried me to the point where I really want to complete side quests. FF7 Rebirth is way stronger in this regard where I'm more motivated. Rebirth's side quests involve a lot of memorable side characters. Doing them also has an effect to the game's relationship and romance system, more on that later. So it always feels like your errands and your odd jobs are worth the hassle. Sure, the side quests aren't perfect, but they're motivating enough for me to actually want to be a completionist and complete them and figure out what's going on with that freaking character over there and what's freaking going on with that character over there. I'd say the most boring side content are the missions where you have to collect this thing called the Proto Relic. 
Every proto relic that you collect involves four missions, and I felt like it really hurt the game's pace because of how slow it was to actually get one proto relic. Why can't we just have only one mission per proto relic instead of four? It also feels like you can move more in this game. There are more movement dimensions. Cloud can now climb rocks, terrain, and practically anything. This ability to explore every nook and cranny made it all the more freeing, adventuring throughout the world. Remake always had this trajectory where you always needed to go from A to B, but for Rebirth you can really take the time to explore the world before you proceed to the next main mission. And that is the one core improvement that Rebirth has that makes it stand out over Remake. Also, I forgot to mention, PlayStation 5 SSD Fast Travel. Fast Travel has never been faster using the PS5's SSD hardware. Enough said. Add to the fact that now Cloud can also ride chocobos and waddle away, waddle waddle, waddle waddle away, waddle. Each chocobo that Cloud encounters in every world has a unique skill suited for that world. Exploring these first few worlds from FF7 Rebirth is an experience that I will cherish forever. It's such a core memory in my heart now. That being said, the game's pacing does kind of dip midway through the game, as the filler content and side quests can get pretty excessive when you get to like the third, the fourth world. So what at first felt pretty liberating, slowly turned a little bit into a bunch of chores. But it isn't to the level of disinterest that I have with completing side quests from other video games though, like I mentioned before. I want to talk about the combat now in Rebirth. Rebirth, in my opinion, has one of the best combat mechanics in a Final Fantasy game. Square Enix pulled no punches with this one. This is definitely a textbook modern RPG. It is not an easy game as well. This game has a lot of enemies. Enemy variety is so high. For every different enemy you encounter, you need a different strategy as to what to do to it. So that assess material is going to be so important for your gameplay experience. You have enemies that are weak to fire, you have enemies that are weak to certain other things, and you have enemies that punishingly stunlock you for no reason because you're a bad player! You're a bad player! This game has way more party members than any other modern Final Fantasy game. I think you play about 7 to 8 characters, and within those characters you have to choose your party of 3 that's going to battle. Now Rebirth has this amazing feature where you can preset three sets of three party members so that you can shift between trios very easily just using the L1 and R1 buttons. This is Rebirth's best quality of life feature. There is no pause screen needed to switch between different characters. And that is something that I think more RPGs should really do. Features like this that enhance the game's accessibility and player convenience should get a gold medal because that is a very time-saving, amazing feature. Seriously, this is such a genius addition. Now obviously you have the regular array of things that you can upgrade in a Final Fantasy game. Every character has weapons, accessories, armors, and materia that you can upgrade. In addition to that, there's also a sphere grid system, similar to Final Fantasy X where you can upgrade your weapons, stats, and learn new combat skills. The game throws at us so many customizable game elements and it kind of reminds you of an RPG. Now Rebirth has a lot of content, but the thing that it has most is minigames. There are a ton of minigames in Rebirth. All of the minigames from the first remake return. You also have minigames that feel like games within games. It's almost like Rebirth is a flash game website that contains a collection of games of different genres. Let me tell you an example, there's Queen's Blood. Queen's Blood is a game I never thought I would like. It's essentially a card game. Yet, I played all the Queen's Blood games up until the end. You could tell the devs put a lot of heart and soul to this one game, organically adding more depth and complexity to it. The various strategies you can use to win the game makes it a true highlight. You're also rewarded with the wackiest backstory ever. It's what I thought made the game not boring, and surely I think that it didn't overstay its welcome. There's also other minigames like a piano playing minigame. That's a full-fledged rhythm game within this RPG game. Other minigames are a little bit more lackluster and they feel a little bit more filler. For example, do you really need three different combat simulation games? I rest my case.
Overall, this is as open as Final Fantasy VII can get. This game is filled to the brim with activities that you can do, hunts that you can do, monsters that you can fight, and it overall is 70 bucks well spent. Sure, some things are a little bit filler and some cuts need to be made to make the experience an overall cohesive experience, but when you are spoiled with content that is mostly good, how can you not enjoy the platter that is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Aside from gameplay though, something that I really loved about Rebirth is its story. The adventure that Cloud and his friends go through feels more like a Misfits road trip than Final Fantasy XV ever was. It's filled with lots of moments of laughter, and some moments that are more tranquil. So when I mean moments of tranquil, I mean serious conversations that unravel the mystery of Rebirth's story. And also Cloud and Tifa conversations. Honestly, I wish we would have more of these tranquil moments, because they are some of the best story beats in the game. It feels like you're watching a bunch of friends go on a road trip together, and I feel like the game recreated that experience really well. The banter between characters is something that I always look forward to after 8 hours of adventure. Not to mention, every character in this game gets a backstory glow up. Everyone is quite succinctly explored. The towns that you explore throughout the game are where most of these characters grew up. So you'll figure out stuff like Barrett's background with Shinra, Tifa and Cloud's childhood memories in Nibelheim, Red's origins. Everyone in this game is relatively likable, except for Cloud. Oh my goodness, what is up with that boy Cloud? And why do I feel like this dude is as dry as an uncooked pasta? I don't know why, but there is something up with this characterization that I do not really like. Tifa deserves better! It seems like they're setting up to complete his character arc sometime in the third game, but I wish there would have been a bit more depth in the material that they gave my boy Cloud. Throughout the game, he experiences hallucinations of Sephiroth. That's his character development. And also, Yuffie is literally a Genki girl, that's all. And now, my unbiased opinion of Aerith. Now let's talk about the best part of the story. No, 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 not that! The romance system! Oh my goodness, do you know that I am a sucker for romance, and this romance system absolutely slaps. This romance system where you choose between option A or option B or option C for certain characters has made me freaking doom game. Alright, it's a new word that I invented that essentially means doom scrolling, but for gaming. I just wanted to see that good outcome with the romance system. And folks, I want to tell you guys, you will see an amazing, amazing, amazing outcome from that romance system. And I've never felt more achieved when I reached that climactic conclusion of that romance system. But anyways, let's go back to the main story. The developers do take a lot of creative liberties to change up a lot of things in this Rebirth game compared to the original. The game feels very meta-textual in that it assumes that people have played or know the story of the original Final Fantasy VII game. And having that in mind will sort of enhance your perception of this new remade story. While I'm personally enamored by the creative direction the game took me, some of the impact that the original game had could be lost, which could make or break your enjoyment of the game. For me, I still enjoyed and am fascinated conceptually by the story's changes. I could have done without the Zack intermission story. I feel like they could have integrated that in a better way instead of piecing it out in chunks. It kind of feels out of place, and by the end of the game, it still feels a little bit out of place. I wish they would have integrated that story a little bit better. I still feel that Rebirth's greatest strength comes in its interactions between the main characters, rather than its ambitious narrative departures. I also want to highlight one more thing. 
Final Fantasy always has the best music. I mean, one of my videos kind of makes tribute to Final Fantasy music if you want to check it out, you know, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> but bloody hell, there are some bangers in this song. Some of the side quest music is great. Like there's this side quest where you kind of like trail a dog and I freaking love that side quest. We're just trailing a dog, but the music is awesome. So now it's great. The world where you go to the jungle actually also has a very good song. I think when you hear it, you'll be like, ooh, that's really tribally and very nice. That being said, I thought Rebirth's music isn't as memorable as Remake. Remake did really set a high bar for how FF7 music can be really catchy and amazing, especially since that game would be the game that would have its popular main character themes. But I think that Rebirth still met the bar that I was expecting, so that's good. One more thing that I want to really highlight about Final Fantasy VII is that Final Fantasy VII is unabashedly JRPG. This is in stark contrast to last year's Final Fantasy XVI, which took a different direction for the franchise. It definitely is the more serious game when you compare it to VII. While I appreciated XVI's strengths, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is definitely way more unapologetic in its JRPG roots. And it is all the more rewarding for those of you Final Fantasy fans who prefer that sort of classic feel. The game's ATB system remains one of the best Final Fantasy combat systems ever. Now it doesn't mean I don't like Final Fantasy 16. It's just that when you compare the gameplay between the two games, I really enjoyed 7's much better than 16. But 16's icon battles continue to be some of the most epic battles that I've ever seen. So if they're able to combine the epicness of 16 and the gameplay of 7, I'm gonna really enjoy Final Fantasy forever. Overall, I think that Final Fantasy VII is an unapologetic tribute, not just to Final Fantasy VII in general, but to the Final Fantasy series as a whole. They have refined and perfected the gameplay that they had from Remake. It's definitely more lighthearted than something like Final Fantasy XVI, but the game still dives really deep to tell the stories of its characters, and some of the more serious moments still hit too. The side content in this game is super vast, it feels very rewarding to explore a lot of these side quests, while some other side quests are a little bit more meh. I'd say for every three good side quests, you get one boring one. Overall, this game has a lot of side content. It's content that's long enough for you to just forget feeding your kids. <laughs> Finally, the story doesn't really shy away from taking ambitious creative liberties. Whether it pays good tribute to the original Final Fantasy VII is another matter entirely. As a guy who didn't play the original game, I still really enjoyed the story. This game is easily a 9.5 out of 10 for me. I can't wait to see Square Enix carry what made this game great and perfect it even more when the final Final Fantasy VII Remake entry comes. And with that, let's dive.